So welcome back to another This Is Rod Building and today we have something pretty special for you. Northern Pike, this little fella here, is one of the most common species we fish for in Europe and we have a lot of people asking us if we could show you how to build a typical rod for fishing for this species. To make it a little bit more diverse, I'm gonna choose a quite a heavy model which is also gonna be really good for musky and things. And the reason I'm doing that is for a pretty cool reason. American Tackle has very kindly said that the rod we build in this video, we're gonna give away. So stay tuned, keep watching. There's gonna be a code word at one point. I'm not gonna say what it is now. Watch in full, let's get building. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're gonna join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're gonna drink a lot of tea, so join me on the ride. Let's have some fun. This is Rod Building, let's do this. So we're gonna start building this rod and I'm gonna really get into this one and focus on making it really fantastic for you guys. One thing I'm gonna go through though very quickly is the components so you understand exactly what we're gonna be using and briefly why. Eight foot 250 gram two piece blank. This is the Bushido 3K. These are very fast action and they've got a lot of buck power. This particular blank is ideal for casting large rubber baits. It's got quite a stiff tip, so if you need to work the bait, any hard baits, you can even fish spinner baits on this. It's a fantastic blank for pike, but also for musky. So you guys in the Northern States, listen up for that code word because we're gonna ship this rod worldwide. I'm using EVA split grips. It's gonna be very ergonomic and also very durable. We're gonna be going with the e seat 17 with a ULH hood. That's gonna look really cool. But not only that, it's got that lovely shallow trigger. It's one of my favorite reel seats, super ergonomic. Fish it a whole day, you don't get trigger finger. We're gonna match that up with some really cool matching sort of black and EVA locking hood. We've got black buck caps, black trim rings. And then, of course, we're gonna be whacking on some Nanolite black microwave 12s. Now these are the ones with the double feet, uh, so super strong, six mil runners, but with a Nanolite ceramic being very thin and very hard, no problems fishing sort of like 0, 040 braid or something, 50, 60 pound, don't worry about it. Just put that bait on and keep casting. Love it when it pisses, goes into position like that.
so that was a bit of a whistle stop tour. We, uh, we really cracked on with it there. Where are we though? So let's do a bit of a midpoint recap. And we've got the EVA. We pressure fitted those in position with the Pro Paste and the thinners. These are quite cool new long grips from American Tackle. I like these. They're 27 mil OD, so they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, tapered in the middle, of course. But if you, if you just reverse them, they fit really nice up to the back of a casting seat. And also for pike fishing, this 27 mil OD butt cap it's gonna look really cool in there. E-seat 17 there, blank exposed, looks really cool, revealing this beautiful 3K finish. We don't wanna hide that. Fits big size casting reels really good. And then we finish it off with this really cool EVA locking trim hood. Really cool. I'll go blacked out on all the whining checks and everything, of course. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. We're gonna put this little Bushido nameplate here which is really cool top center in the split there so there's not really a lot left for me to do other than the the long part which is getting all the guides on so before i put the guides on the blank and start doing the wrapping up here is that code word to win this rod and all you have to do is comment in the section below make sure you're subscribed to our channel of course and you have to use the code word t Talking of tea, it's time for a cuppa. Mm. So, after that brew, we're gonna continue. Now, firstly, obviously we need to spine it up. And find the spine, we'll just take this time to teach you just how to do it. And on stiffer rods, it can be a little bit more tricky, but all you wanna do is support the tip and then push down past the sort of lower action of the tip and just kind of roll it and you see that it's just gonna pop into position. You should always have two opposite sides of a spine. When you found that, top tip is to get a bit of tape, put it on the butt of the tip section like so. Get yourself a marker pen ready. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll it on a nice hard surface. I wouldn't do it on something soft. You want it to be able to flick over easy and just sort of feel the blank and this one's very even as it should be with this blank. So it's, it's the same action and power on both sides. And that one feels really, really nice there. So all I'm gonna do is hold it in that sort of position. I get my marker and I'm gonna just gonna do a little mark and then check it one last time. And that's the spine. Make sure that tip is in line with the spine and that's gonna make everything so much easier to align the guides at the end. Let it dry and we're ready to wrap up the tip. liking the way this rod is looking and we're just gonna make it look even better now i'm just getting some of these uh decals that come with the blank and also with the guides so I've got microwave line control which that could look quite cool up by the guide so maybe put that there and i've got the bushido 3k which says about the length and the specs and everything um and i think we'll put that one above the foregrip um, maybe on the underside and then we've got a wave army logo which would look pretty cool but i'm maybe thinking I might mount that into the butt cap, so I'll show you how to do that one very simply later on. But firstly, we're gonna take this little nameplate, take off the plastic, and uh, we're gonna wrap this one into this split here, this very small split that I left with this in mind. Let's get that one to position. And uh, we're gonna go with a black with red, I think. We've got some red metallics in the microwave, and we've got some red on the 3K there. Um, and we've got the Red Wave Army. So I think we're gonna go with some red metallic on this one. Uh, just some small little details to you know, make it stand out. On these nameplates here, they are actually curved, so they're gonna fit uh, blanks. And what you wanna do, you wanna put it on, and if you think that it's not quite laying flat, just get a hard surface, and they're quite, they're soft aluminum, so you can just sort of push down like so, until you feel that it's like a really smooth fit. Um, and then with the, the feet that come down to whip, you can just sort of gently tease them into position until you feel that it's sitting really flush with the blank. And if I just push a little bit more, that is absolutely perfect. Get a bit of tape, make sure it's in the middle, and put it down. So 
So now we are ready to put the uh, the next stage of the decal with the rod specs, the hook keeper above here. Now I'm a fan of less is more. Uh, I have nothing against doing like really fancy and loud colors and I've done it myself, but this particular rod, I really like that sort of like stealthed out black look. So I think too much color would sort of go against the grain and what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm gonna keep it very simple and detailed, but at the same time, I want this red metallic to have a small little ascents over here. Uh, so I think, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hook keeper on the back and then the decal above it. Uh, one thing to remember, of course, is you need to be able to open this locking hood. And if you were to put this one in check like down here, you might not be able to get a big size reed in there. So what you want to do is open it up and just sort of push it back and just, just where it nicks on. And then you want to make a mark with a china marker so you know that that is sort of the max opening. And then when you put your hook keeper on, you want to put it so the hook keeper stops this from coming too far and you know it's at max opening no problems always make sure to remove any china marks you might have just wipe off the blank i use a bit of thread So now we're on to the guides and uh, maybe we should talk quickly about what guides we're going to use again. We're going to use the Microwave 12 double foot. Now this is the Nanolite version and that's quite a thin ceramic. These guides are quite special. Uh, basically what you're doing is funneling down the line in one guide like you would on a normal guide train, a cone of flight guide train throughout the whole uh, rod. And the benefit in my opinion is that you are saving a lot of weight because you're reducing the guide size directly. It's going to make the tip a bit lighter, so it's going to help bring the balance back. Um, not only that, uh, it's going to help with side-to-side -side slap uh, when the line's coming loose or when you're doing casting with a bait caster. And most people ask me where should you put this guide with the, you know, on guide placement because when you get the packet of guides, unlike the spinning, there's no recommendations on where it should go. And the reason for that is because it really does depend on what sort of blank and what size reel, etc. Generally speaking, I like between 55 and 65 centimeters from the reel to the stripper guide. Now, obviously the way I would change that is if I've got a lighter rod, maybe like a crankbait rod or a glass fiber blank, for example, that's gonna bend deeper into the butt. I wanna bring that guide a bit further back because I don't want the line to pass the blank when it's on compression. So that's the main thing to really think about is you're trying to keep the line on this side, the real side of the blank for a traditional guide setup. If you're gonna be having a very stiff blank like this one here, for example, very, very powerful, but uh, you don't need to worry. You could put it quite high up, uh, but like I said, personal preference, I find between 55 and 65 centimeters works really well for me. That helps with not too much line slap it's not too close, so the line spreader is going to have an issue with you know too acute angle there. Uh, it just works. So from that one up to the tip, then all we do is a static deflection, and by that I mean you want to be looking at the guide placement for the line, not to pass the blank. Like I said earlier, and there's many videos for you to watch that. In fact, American Tackle has one on our how to, so check that one out. I'm going to get this guide on now, and the rod is almost finished. Crack on with the tip section. And there's nothing left but just to get some epoxy on it and then uh, we're gonna give it away. So the last decal is on there. I just put it on next to it like that. It looks pretty cool. Um, got a little china marker there. We just need to rub off with a little bit of saliva. If you can't get it off, you can take a little bit of thread. When you see it, make sure you clean it off. So it's pretty much done. Uh, we just need to give it the epoxy, the final coats. First coat will be a medium build, and then we'll put a high build over the top and we'll get that really nice glassy finish. Uh, if you wanna see anything about epoxy, we did do another video uh, called Epoxy Like a Pro, so check that one out. So there's not really much left to do. I guess I should check the guide there, make sure it's straight. Use one of these little guide alignment tools. Basically it's a little bit of plastic, it looks like a foot of a reel and you put it in and you can just check out. And yeah, we got that one right first time, which is good news. 
No more having to rely on your eyes to make sure it's straight all the time. Really, really good thing. Don't cost a lot. Have a couple in the workshop. I lose a few of them. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Uh, this is gonna hit first coat, as I said. We've got this in the back. It's just a little bit of excess blank that, that plugs in so we can put it into the rack. While that one is gonna be drying, I'm gonna show you a little tip and then it's just uh, waiting for it to be finished, I guess. So this next tip I'm gonna show you is very simple and it's basically how to put your logos into these butt caps. Now, these are quite common. You can get them from most Rob building stores. They're very similar to the ones that go into the carbon G2 butts. So you can do it in those as well. Basically what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna put this wave army symbol uh, in on this butt cap, which will look pretty cool. Um, of course, you could get these laser etched if you wanted, and I've done that myself with my own logos. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a real quick method with all the stuff you've got in your workshop for rod building of how to make it look really cool. And it's quite simple. All you wanna do, firstly, is to get a little bit of rag and make sure that you clean the inside so it's, it's not dusty and clean. And then all you're gonna do very simply is put that sticker, that decal inside. Now, one thing I would recommend is to get yourself a bit of scrap EVA or something and so you can just hold it very simple on the bench like that. It's gonna make life a bit easier for you. And then you wanna get some tape. And this is basically just to help lift the decal off. A couple sort of small picks. Now, this is what I'm gonna to use to sort of try and get it centered in the middle there because it's gonna be a little tricky to get my fingers in. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a corner of the decal like so and lift it off. And then you want to just put it in position and you want to float it over in the center as best you can see, like so, and then sort of try and push it down. You're going to use the pick to sort of position it. I think we've landed pretty good already. And then very carefully remove the tape, like so. And then very gently just rub the air out. Take the other one. I'm just going to rub the air out, like so very gently not to disturb the decal. Once you've got it pretty much all the way down, you can then, if you really want, rub it with your finger, just to sort of really push some pressure on it. Like so, that looks really good. And I just take a bit of rag again and just sort of give it a little rub. That's also gonna heat it up a little bit. It's gonna make that glue really sort of like get warmed up. And there you go, that's how it's gonna look. Now. So you could leave it like that, um, but it's just gonna be a sticker and you could easily scrape it out. Some people will take some spray clear and do over the top of it, um, but personally, I like to give it a little bit of depth and it does really make it pop by using some Proco High Build. I've tried it with glues like Fast Set and you can do it, but it can go a little bit yellow too quickly, whereas the UV resistance of this is pretty good and it will stay quite clear. There'll be less bubbles, etc. So we're gonna do that one now and we'll show you pouring it on and uh, how to make sure there's no bubbles. So I've used about one and a half of each. Now that's not so much, but it's way more than I need. Mix it very, very gently like you normally do with your epoxy, just so you don't get too many bubbles in there. You definitely don't want micro bubbles for this one because it's gonna be extremely hard to get it out. The reason for that is because the epoxy is gonna be quite thick. Now, like any good result on epoxy, lots of small layers are best. We're gonna add as thin layers we can get away with. And if when it sets and it's gone level, you think that you wanna add a bit more depth to it, just add another layer, but don't go adding too much in one go. So now the epoxy is fully mixed and it's looking really clear and nice. You wanna do this when it's still quite runny. You don't wanna do it when it's set a little bit. And what you wanna try and do is take a little bit on a popsicle stick like this and just dribble it into onto the, the, the decal and just sort of move it around. And trust me, you're not gonna need very much. This is way more than we need and we're just gonna lay it on like so and just help it move around because it's very, very flat. Push it into the corners like so. And just have a look how much you need. I think we're gonna put a little bit more on there. We're not gonna need much more, like so. That's looking really good. And then what we're gonna do is just make sure it pushes into the corner there. Perfect. Okay. Now, when it's like this, the one thing I would say is you need to make sure that the underside of the butt cap is sealed. Sometimes these kind of butt caps, they'll have a gap. Uh, the rubber isn't very tight to the, the metal plate and it will dribble through. So you're gonna see issues if you have that. This one here is very tightly sealed. So just make sure that when you're doing it by checking the butt cap. When you've got it like this now, uh, we wanna get those bubbles out. You can see there's a few there and the best way to do that is by heating the epoxy lightly. Get your heat source and just flash the epoxy. Don't do it more than that and wait. 
The reason being is you don't want to burn the epoxy and make it go like jelly. We've all done it <laughs> with tests uh, and you don't want to do it. So just, just flash it a little bit, wait for it to settle. And I can see there's not many bubbles left. There's a couple left in there. I'm going to get those in a second. I'm going to get it again and I'm just going to hit it like so and then wait and just check. And that took out the majority there. I can see one more little devil I don't want to leave in there. So I'm going to hit it one last time and I think that'll be it. Yeah, it's gone. There we go. Perfectly clear now and dead center. So basically that's going to look really, really nice. I could, if I wanted, add a little bit more after it's set, if I want to make it a bit higher, but it's level now. It's going to look really good. I just need to wait. I guess that means it's time for a cup of tea. Well, look what we have here. This rod looks amazing. Personally, I want to keep it. I think it looks brilliant. I've felt it, it's really, really good. I just wanna go and chuck a really big swim bait out and try and catch a monster pike on this rod. But unfortunately, I have made you a promise and that is I am going to be giving this rod away to one of you lucky people. So like we said, you've got the code word in this video. You need to go through, make sure you've watched it, make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for the notifications and comment below the code word. Okay, so when you've done that, when this video reaches 10,000 views, which isn't very many for such a good quality video like this, we're gonna choose one lucky winner to win this rod. And it's worldwide. So no matter where you are, we will ship you this rod. You're welcome. This is Rod Building, and that's a wrap.